Good morning, it's day two of spending a good lot of time on this. I've laid this flat on the table so I can put these uprights in. I need to figure out exactly what these are gaps have to be so I can space them all evenly. Hey boy. 428 plus 50 mil. When I have to take this piece off, what I'll do is I'll put a bit of box section all the way down that side, all the way down the other side, tie these all together so they can't move, fill them all with concrete, then I'll put that back on. This one took ages. Anyway, I think that's it by on now. If I get it bang on now, it should last donkeys. But if I get anything squint now, I'll be looking at it for donkeys. Right, I'm beginning to tack these in. The spacing between these is 164.4 mil all the way across. There should be one which is bang in the center because there's, there's seven uprights, so one will be bang in the center, which is on the middle of this collet. That's bang in the middle. So this one, that's such an off cut. These were actually quite tight in getting between the top and the lower beam. So I used an off cut here, a bit of a spacer and then a pry bar to wedge that open like that wedged it open a bit jammed something in that gap so it gave me a wee bit of leeway to put these beams in and then i released it and it's kind of pinched them all quite tight she moves like she don't care. Smooth as silk. Cool as voila the backboard is it's all tacked it's not fully welded there's quite a lot of seams to do one two three 18 seams to do on this I've been trying to get my hands on loads of offcuts of steel to put in the back here and then fill it with concrete on top of that just for maximum weight. I need to go and weigh the old stone grape. There's probably 200 kilo of weights on the old stone grape. The whole stone grape probably also weighs 250, 300, there thereabouts. And we've put about 300 kilo of water on it in barrels. So add all that up. Then we need it slightly heavier than that. So I'll probably chuck it on the trailer, take it along to the weigh bridge, weigh it, and I can get a guesstimate for how heavy I need to make this. Ideally, the less weights I have to add to this, the better, because then it gives you more space for stones. And I'm not worried about this being too heavy or not being able to reduce the weight, because we've got the other smaller one for the likes of rolling, where we don't need the weight. Fuel the old girl up. Going along to Tally Bard and Smitty, where hopefully we can get a pile of offcuts of steel. She was bone dry, so. It's blowing a hooli today. Let's go and chop all those scraggly bits off, because those beans are going to be sitting there for a wee while. I've been and I've got a few chunky bits and a beam there as well. I don't know why, but I had dreams of loads of off cuts like that, but they didn't have any. So they've given me a few chunks, so thank you very much. I'll need to just search about around here, around the farm and just chop loads of metal up and fill it up. There is a big old lorry in, tipping lime. It's getting quite heavy now. I'm going to get a forklift. There we go, that's going to be a bit easier to weld. So now I can get on with welding this. I don't know whether I'll probably just place it back up onto the table and take it off of the forklift. You can isolate this machine, but for the sake of all the batteries that are in it, I'm just not going to risk that. We're in the money, clamp down, start doing these seams. I'm going to do the inside seams first, either side, and then I'll lay it flat when I'm doing these seams, just it'll make a nicer weld. 
my welding abilities once you go beyond flat drastically reduce. Stevie's looking after us. Fuse is burnt out. This is on a 13 amp fuse, this machine, and it should be a 16 amp, but it means it's plumbed directly to the wall and you can't move it as much, so I'm on a 13 amp. Right, we've made a bit of progress with seams down here. Um, there's a couple of decent ones. There is the first one I did, which was a disaster. Hide that one, the rest are all right. Because I was messing about with settings here, basically this side wasn't hot enough. This side was hotter, which meant when this was cooling, um, it pulled the steel that way because when steel cools, it shrinks effectively. And if that shrinks, it draws this side closer to this side and it outweighed the force from this side and it pinged off the tacks up here. You can spend all that time tacking and fitting it up and then too much heat on one side and it can just start to warp and move. It always warps and moves, it always wants to warp and move. You just got to try and stop it and try and mitigate it or try and fix it. Ideally with this, I do seam here and immediately do the bottom seam, but I can't do that, how it's situated. So I say that because I don't want it to warp at all, but hopefully well, I'm gonna leave this outside box section, I'm dealing with that later. But the internal boxes, I'm hoping the fact that there's weld down here and down here, it'll stop it trying to move this way as this weld cools. <laughs> They're not bad. Um, oh, that one's quite good actually. The first one I did was a bit ropey. I had to stop start there and there. You can see where I had to stop and start. The wire stopped feeding properly. And then I changed my tips and whatnot and they started feeding a lot better. Just flipped over and get the rest of the seams done on the bottom. They pooch. fear has come true all my tacks have come off <sighs> along the top just as these welds have all cooled put too much stress through the material and it's forced these welds to crack probably should have put bigger tacks on here i just put wee little blobs on every corner damn it damn it anyway we'll just deal with it what we dug hey boy Scrap everything I've said, I've realised what I've done. Bottom piece of metal is bowed now because every single one of these welds, one, two, three, four, all the way along there, as they've cooled, they've drawn together here, drawn together here, and once you've done it across every single one of them, it's basically put a bow on this bottom piece. That's why there's a gap up there and these welds are pinged off because that's the top bar is dead straight. The bottom bar is bowed and because it's still tacked in place at that end and those two at that end the bow is lower in the middle which has pulled these tacks off i didn't i didn't think about the bottom piece bowing in the way when i was welding it but anyway too late now it's not ideal but it's what i've got to play with now a slightly bowed wonky piece of metal which it was always going to be a bit wonky it's never going to be dead straight i'm working with a table which is not quite flat and I'm right on the edge of my talent level with welding with this. I should get it almost back to bang on if I press down here, bring this steel down to these steels with, a, with the GCB, weld them in again, and then when I come to weld these seams, the stress in this beam will equal, or will be opposite to the stress in that beam, and it should relatively evenly set itself level. That's going to be like a flipping snake. 
abandoning this again. Me and Dad are off to the cattle market, United Auctions down Stirling Way. There's a few coos for sale. So we'll see you at the market. Right, we're in. Here's some coos to look at. This is the breeding cattle that's for sale here. We're kind of interested in this last block of 50 simmentals. That block there. 50 simmentals in calf to Charlie, due from the 1st of March onwards. All these pens down here bar the top four here are all the cows we're looking at just now. All simmentals, all in calf to Charlie. We've had a pick through them all. There's first calvers, second calvers, third calvers, and beyond. So the, the colour of the tag dictates what they are. So an orange, this one, first caver. Reds are second, greens are thirds, and blues are a mix. There's a fair few to pick from. We're looking for maybe six. Round up, we're at 34 cows at the moment, so we'll take up to about 40. That's what we're looking for. Shoot for six, see where we end up. Last time we bought something, well, no, sorry, last time I bought something from this market was that nutter of a cow. The worst buy I've ever done. There's two sale rings here, one up there, one in here. We're down here. There's a lot of store cattle getting sold today, and they're all getting sold in that ring. We used to be in that ring quite often buying fattening cattle, but now we're producing calves, we're in there a lot less. We're getting there, we're through these first block, we're on this block of 40 and then we're on to the 50 that we're looking at. We've picked out about 10 we'd like, of which we'll try and buy about six, two loads. You get a board up there that tells you all about them when they come in. Age, breed, in calf, when they're due. That's the pen they've been in, just if you've made a note yourself. Oh, we're in the money now, high and tea. This is the last beast. We've bought three. And we're not getting another one because it makes it two loads. Job done, we got three. Fairly successful, ended up with three. They were, prices were fairly strong, so we didn't end up with six like we came for, but we got three, we'll see how we get on with them. Just go and grab the trailer, get loaded up, head home. They're due from 1st of March onwards for nine weeks, so ties in exactly the same as our calving, so I was quite keen to get them. The bays are all full, it's chock-a-block. I've got one lorry in front of me, then I'll get in the next, the next free one. You always think there's a free one there, but there's a wee short lorry in there. They'll be taking cattle from quite a few different buyers. Some of them will be, probably just be one buyer, but some of them are split into a lot of different buyers, and the lorry will drive up the road or down the road and stop off at all the stops and drop off the cattle as they go. So a lot of the lorries that are sitting here won't be coming out for a good while because the store sale will keep going for hours. Movement, we're in. Come on in, on you go. That's you, that's you. Happy days. Three cattle, three coos. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just got a wee squash in between there, stood in a stupid place. Of another load of lime. This is the second last one, then job done with the lime. Big walking floor in this trailer. So it's got teeth all along the floor. They all come forward at once, which shunts it all, and then they go back in two halves. So every other one comes back in a shunt, and then the other two come back in a shunt. So it doesn't actually move the lime going back that way. See it shunting going that way. Bang, bang. There we go. Anyway, last of the lime. 